Hello, what's up? This will be our last lesson for Introduction to Psychology. As promised, pag-uusapan natin ngayon yung part 2 of our current discussion on psychological disorders. But before this, let's just have a very quick review on part 1. I answered two questions. What does it mean to be mentally ill? And where does mental illness come from? Very quickly for number 1, what does it mean? To be mentally ill, it has something to do with how different you are compared to the norm. Kapag masyadong drastic, masyadong malaki yung difference mo from the norm, that's the reason why you get the label abnormal or non-normal or not normal. But we also discussed last episode or sorry, last video na hindi porket iba ka, automatic mental illness, we also accept a certain parang um, tolerance of difference. The difference for it to be considered a, a, a possible expression of mental illness has to be drastically different from the norm. And also, I, I mentioned that those differences in thinking and behavior must meet certain criteria para makonsider mo that those thinking and behavioral differences may be an expression of mental illness. In this lecture, mamaya as we go along, we are going to talk about those two criteria. And then number two, what does mental illness or where does mental illness come from? We discussed that there are many possible reasons kung bakit magkakasakit yung ating psyche. It could be brain damage, it could be genetics, or it can also come from the environment. But upon teaching this, after I taught this, meron pala akong na-miss out. And I would like to apologize, no? But for number two, I also want to add another factor that can, that will explain where mental illness comes from. Other than these three, brain damage, genes, and environment, alam nyo ba meron ding role ang personality attributes? Why a person would become mentally ill? So, meron tayo mga patterns of personality that are not good. That if you keep on doing it, if you maintain those negative personality attributes, it can also lead to certain forms of mental illnesses. So, let's have a quick review. For example, in the Big Five, we discussed this during our lesson on personality. We have Big Five traits, ocean. Openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. We have all of this. All people have the ocean. Iba-iba lang tayo ng degree or ng level. There are certain personality profiles or certain personality traits that will make a person more likely to develop a mental disorder. Such as, for example, according to studies, low agreeableness and high neuroticism. Kapag yung personality profile mo is like this, mababa yung agreeableness mo, you are always in conflict with other people, or you have very high neuroticism, you always feel negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, and guilt, that will predispose you to develop a number of psychological disorders. At alam nyo ba, this idea that our personality attributes can make our minds get sick is very biblical. In the book of James chapter 3 verse 16, it says, For where you have envy, take note of that, envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Those words, envy and selfish ambition are personality traits yan eh. Kung itatrace mo to sa big five personality, Envy can be an expression of what? A low agreeableness or even selfish ambition, low agreeableness yan or even high in neuroticism. Kapag mataas ang neuroticism mo, mababa ang agreeableness mo, most likely you will be an envious person, you will be a selfish person which according to the passage can cause certain disorders. I believe the word disorder here also includes mental disorders. So, again, let's not miss the point. Ang point ko lang dito, certain personality attributes o sa Tagalog, mga kaugalian, mga maliliit na kaugalian can also lead to the development of certain psychological disorders. 
And this is good news, no? So what? Bakit ko ba hinabol pa to? Kasi ang magandang application dito, it, it simply means that personality development can help. Can help us prevent psychological disorders or even improve the conditions of people with psychological disorders already. So one way to do that is to improve our personality attributes. So going back to the big five, yung mga matataas ang N at mga mabababa ang A, one way to help them is to help them increase their agreeableness and lower down their neuroticism. And there are many proven strategies, there are many proven um, therapies that we can apply to get rid or to to change those negative personality attributes. no? Like for example, pampababa ng neuroticism, there is this one workbook developed by David Clark and the great Aaron Beck, the Anxiety and Worry Workbook. Obviously, in this workbook, the person will be taught how to lower down neuroticism. In fact, meron akong hard copy niya. No? Let me show this to you. Here's my hard copy of this. So, these pages are full of different strategies to help someone lower neuroticism. Remember, mas mababa ang neuroticism mo, lesser chance that you will develop certain psychological disorders. Another book that can help people to prevent developing mental illnesses is the Emotional Intelligence book by Daniel Goleman. Diba? If you have heard of IQ, we also have such a thing as EQ. And according to mental health experts, one factor that will protect us from the development of psychological disorders, also known as protective factor, ito yung tinatawag nating EQ. People with high levels of EQ are less likely to develop psychological disorders compared to people with low EQ. So, I also have, ito, meron din akong hard copy niya, no? The one by Daniel Goleman. If you read this book, tuturuan ka on how to effectively handle your emotions. How to effectively deal with other people's emotions, which are, again, two very important skills to make our mental health better, which will lower down our chance of developing psychological disorders the more emotional skills you know how to do like how to deal with sadness how to deal with worry how do you deal with anger of another person how do you become more assertive lahat yan nakasulat dito sa libro ni daniel goldman so you can only imagine if you know to do all those emotional skills in the right way definitely mas mababa yung tendency mo to develop psychological disorders. So, I think in general, good news yung mga sinasabi ko because it only teaches us na talagang meron tayong mga paraan na pwedeng magawa for our own mental health. Alright? So, we can do a number of behaviors or therapy or programs to make our mental health better and so not develop mental illness or kung meron ka ng mental illness, pwede mo pa rin gawin yung mga things na yan, yung mga tasks na yan, to lessen the intensity of your current psychological disorder. Okay, so I want you to think about first, digest everything I've told you so far about these things. Now, let's move on to the third question about psychological disorders. How do we know someone if someone is mentally ill? Paano ba natin malalaman, confirm officially that this person is suffering from a psychological disorder? The first thing I want to share with you in connection to this question, please lang, don't base a person's mental health status on the way they look. Kasi most Filipinos, I notice... Eh, gawa rin ng media yan, no? Uh, we tend to equate mental illness or mental health of a person on physical looks. Pag hindi maayos manamit, sira-sira yung damit, 
or mukhang may something, we conclude that this person is mentally not healthy. Meron daw siyang psychological disorder. And vice versa, kapag maayos yung damit, disente tignan, uh, malamang sa malamang mentally healthy yan. I tend to disagree because I know many people, mukha lang meron siyang psychological disorder, magulubuhok, gula-gula nit yung damit, pero yun lang talaga yung fashion style niya. It doesn't mean that meron siyang psychological disorder. No, He's doing well okay, in terms of mental health. Pero meron din naman mga tao na maayos ang damit, di ba? Disente tignan, but what we don't know deep inside, sila pala yung merong mga psychological disorders. Bottom line here is, physical looks is not an accurate, um, an inaccurate parang measure to determine a person's overall level of mental health. So, anong gagawin natin if we really want to confirm if a person's mental health is doing fine, well, what we need to do is to undergo what we call diagnosis. Diba? It's a medical term, pero ginagamit din natin ito in psychology when we deal with psychological disorders. To really confirm that a person is or ha- is, does have a mental illness, kinakailangan gumamit tayo ng diagnosis. Ano bang ginagawa sa diagnosis? It is defined as utilization of scientific knowledge for identifying a disease process and to differentiate it from other disease process. Let me continue. In other words, literal meaning of diagnosis is determination and judgment of variations from the normal. So, it is a system. Ito is itong sistema na kung saan gumagamit tayo ng methods of science where the primary objective of this process is to confirm the existence of a psychological disorder within a person. So, that's the main question that we want to answer in the process of diagnosis. Is this person or does this person, is this person suffering from a certain form of mental illness? And, of course, hindi na natin masyadong uh, mapag-uusapan yung specific steps in diagnosis. We'll talk about this in clinical psychology or even in abnormal psychology. But so far, what you have to know is in, in undergoing diagnosis, kinakailangan natin ng tools. Psychologists use tools to help them um, diagnose, to help them use the process of diagnosis systematically. Okay? And one of the tools, two of the tools, I mean, two of the tools na laging ginagamit ng mga psychologists to help with diagnosis are the following tools. We have the DSM-5, Diagnostic Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, and ICD-10, or the Classification of Mental and Behavioral Disorders. But between the two, mas sikat, mas popular na ginagamit yung DSM-5. So, my lecture for today will focus more on the DSM-5. More about ICD-10 when we meet again in clinical psychology or abnormal psychology. So, let's zoom in to uh, DSM-5. No? Ano ba yung DSM-5 na yan? It's a book. It's a very thick book. It's a very heavy book. I, ha- I have a hard copy. Wait lang. Ito. Here you go. It's a very thick book. Okay? Ang pangalan niyan ay DSM-5. Bakit natin ginagamit ito? This is a book that will help psychologists really undergo or really use diagnosis the right way. Para ma-confirm natin if a person indeed meron ba talaga siyang psychological disorder. This is also known as the Bible of Psychological Disorders. Why was it called the Bible of Psychological Disorders? It contains the following things. Very useful for psychologists na gagamit ng diagnosis. No? Number one, all the name of disorders are here. Lahat ng psychological disorders discovered by human beings are all compiled in this book. And then a short background for each of those disorders. And the most important part is the specific symptoms of each disorder. And those symptoms for each disorder, yan yung pinakaginagamit natin 
to formally diagnose someone kung meron ba talaga siyang mental disorder o wala. So, what we do here is we simply collect the symptoms that the person may be showing in his or her everyday life. So, kukolektahin natin yung mga symptoms niya. And then, after collecting the symptoms, we are going to compare whether those symptoms fit a certain diagnosis, a certain mental disorder reported within the DSM-5. Ganon. No? So, ganon yung proseso. Kolektahin natin yung symptoms and compare those symptoms if it exists anywhere in the pages of DSM-5. Now, if we can see that indeed your symptoms match a certain disorder written in the DSM-5, it confirms that you have a psychological disorder. Kapag wala naman, nang kolekta tayo ng symptoms, those symptoms are not enough, we cannot find any disorder that pertains to your symptoms, then wala kang psychological disorder. Again, it's not as easy as you hear it is. Okay? Kasi nga, ano lang to, no? Psy uh, introduction to psychology pa lang to, the specific steps and processes on how to really diagnose someone with psychological disorder will be taught to you by your abnormal psychology teacher or clinical psychology teacher. Instead, ang gusto kong i-focus ngayon for this lesson is, well, let's talk about the three common symptoms that are shared by all psychological disorders. If you have any one of these three, more or less, we can conclude that you are mentally ill. Hahanapin na lang natin kung anong specifically pangalan ng mental illness mo. But once you show any one of these three common symptoms of all disorders, then it confirms that you're, you are not doing well in terms of your mental health. Meron kang diagnosis. Okay? So, I want you to be honest as you listen to this next few slides. Tignan nyo kung meron ba kayong mga ganitong symptomas. Number one, a person, more than 50% of the chance, meron siyang psychological disorder kapag meron siyang mental suffering. What do you mean by mental suffering when the person experiences anxiety and disorganization in terms of thinking? That person is always not at ease. Sa Tagalog, lagi siyang balisa. No? Or magulo ang kanyang pag-iisip. You cannot think straight. Whenever you think, your, your, your process of thinking is clouded. Ayan. So kapag ganyan yung normal status mo, most of your time, ganyan ang iyong mental status, then most likely you hit common symptom number one. That means you may have a psychological disorder. One good example of this symptom, kung para ma magkaroon kayo ng idea how this symptom is expressed, take a look at the song written by Linkin Park entitled Heavy. In this song, the word heavy here pertains to kung ano yung nararamdaman niya kung ano yung tumatakbo sa utak niya. Oh, word pa lang, heavy, alam mo nang this person, meron itong psychological condition. No? So, if you read the lyrics of this song, Heavy, sabi ng Linking Park, I don't like my mind right now, stacking up problems that are so unnecessary, wish that I could slow things down. I wanna let go, but there's comfort in the panic, and I drive myself crazy, thinking everything's about me. Yeah, I drive myself crazy because I can't escape the gravity. Diba kung mararamdaman mo yung emotion ng song, you will conclude that this person has a very poor psychological condition. This person is mentally suffering. Another example, oh, let's pick one psychological disorder by the name of dependent personality disorder. Nasa DSM-5 yan. Ito yung mga tao na meron silang constant fear, constant anxiety of being left alone. Ayaw nilang iiwan sila. Gusto nila lagi silang nakadikit, nakadepende sa ibang tao. Okay? So, the DSM-5 considers that pattern a psychological disorder. Now, again, if you, if you take a look at the mental condition of people with this disorder, 
talagang masasabi mo eh, na they are in constant uh, experience of anxiety and disorganization in thinking. Oh, one example of song na sa tingin ko may express symptom number one, the song entitled How Do I Live Without You? Let me read the lyrics. Anong sabi? How do I get through one night without you? If I had to live my life without you, what kind of life would that be? Oh, I need you in my arms, need you to hold. You're my world, my heart, my soul, if you ever live. Well, baby, you would take away everything good in my life. And tell me now, kayo na lang bahala magbasa ng chorus, no? Anong sabi doon? How do I live without you? I want to know, so on and so forth. Oh my goodness, please don't think that these words are so sweet. Diba? Yung mag-iba sa inyo, kikiligin dyan. Oh, love na love niya yung partner niya. Guess what? Whoever sang this song, I would say, meron itong mental suffering. Possible na meron itong psychological disorder. Now, this will be your little assignment. I want you to read the entire lyrics of this song and you compare the lyrics of that song to the specific symptoms of dependent personality disorder as reported in the DSM-5. Gawin nyo yan, ha? Basahin nyo yung lyrics ng song, ikumpara nyo yung, yung mga linya doon sa song dito sa mga simptomas ng dependent personality disorder. You know what you will see? For every major symptom of this disorder, you can find a line in the song that reflects that symptom. Kumbaga sa simpleng Tagalog, parang ginawang kanta yung dependent personality disorder. Oh, siguro yung taong to may dependent personality disorder, ginawan niya ng kanta, naging how do I live without you? Oh, di ba? Kaya again, remember my lecture in the previous video where I told you to be very extremely careful about the kinds of songs that you listen to. Kasi kapag hindi ka careful, hindi mo alam, yung mga lyrics ng kanta, are actually symptoms of psychological disorder that you are training your mind to believe that you have those symptoms and you end up really developing a certain psychological disorder. Alright? So, mag-ingat, mag-ingat, mag-ingat sa mga pinapakinggan yung music. Okay? Now, let's move on to common symptom number two. You have an inability to function in your everyday life. Actually, if you notice, symptom number two is very connected with symptom number one. Eh. Diba? Remember, ano yung common symptom number one? Uh, where is that? Ayan. Merong mental suffering. Dahil nagme-mental suffering ka, ang tindi-tindi ng suffering mo mentally, that will lower down your motivation to do the things that you normally do every day. Kaya nangyayari dyan, ayaw mo nalang lumabas ng bahay. Ayaw mo nalang lumabas ng kwarto. All of a sudden, you no longer care about your career. You no longer care about your marriage. You no longer care about your business. Why? Because you are mentally suffering. That's why common symptom number one is connected to common symptom number two. And this is not good. This is not good because if you have symptom number two, you are no longer doing the things that you are supposed to do every day, you can no longer carry out your responsibilities, this will make your life spiral down. Ayan na. Kaya yung buhay ng tao bumabagsak kapag meron siyang psychological disorder eh, because of symptom number two. They are now unable to do the things that they used to do because of a certain psychological disorder. Kaya alam nyo, given this, no? Given this idea na kung anong epekto ng mental illness sa buhay ng tao, the response that we need to do here is let's practice sensitivity and understanding. Kapag meron tayong nakikitang tao na sa tingin natin nag spiral down yung buhay at hindi naman siya dating ganun, let's not immediately judge the person stupid or lazy or ayan kasi mayabang. No. In fact, the more we have to be concerned. Diba? Kapag ang, dati ang ganda-ganda ng buhay, ang ganda-ganda ng trabaho, biglang sunod-sunod yung mga kamalasang nangyayari, 
the first response we need to do to that person is approach that person and ask if everything is okay. Ganyan dapat. Hindi yung pinagtatawanan pa natin yung mga kinaka- yung pagbagsak nila. Pinaghihinalaan pa natin na baka palpak yung mga decision making nila. After all, baka kaya siya ganun kasi meron siyang mental disorder na kailangan niya ng tulong. Diba? So that's what we need to do. If you encounter people like that whose life is spiraling down, maybe the reason is mental illness and this person needs help. All right? Common symptom number three is having a desire to hurt, to hurt or to abuse the self and other people. Kapag meron ka ng ganyang desire, no, gusto mong saktan yung sarili mo, gusto mong manakit ng ibang tao, then it's a clear indication that you have a psychological disorder. Hanapin na lang natin yung pangalan ng psychological disorder mo, but sure ball, kumbaga sa basketball, no, sure ball, kapag meron kang ganyang symptom, nako, meron ka na talagang psychological disorder. Imposibleng meron kang ganitong symptom and then you're mentally healthy. No? They are incompatible. One good example of this would be trichotillomania. Diba? Yung, they, they, these people have an obsessive compulsion to pull their hairs out. Now, we all know na kapag binubunot mo yung sarili mong buhok, masakit yan eh. Diba? That's why normal people, you don't like your hair being pulled. Kasi masakit. Diba? May sting yun eh. May, may hapdi kapag binunot mo yung sarili mong buhok. And normal reaction to that pain is we run away. So, ayaw natin binubunutan tayo ng buhok kasi nga masakit. But for these people, kaya nga common symptom number three, no? they get addicted to the pain that they inflict to themselves. So, bunot sila ng isang buhok, they feel the pain. Instead of running away, they love it. So, what do they do? They, they pull again their hair. So, they experience another pain and they do that over and over again until their heads become like this. At meron pang variant ng trichotillomania where after pulling their hair, people would eat the hair that they pull to the point that sa sobrang daming buhok na ang na-ingest, it has already taken the shape of the stomach. The picture you can see here is an actual picture of a person with trichotillomania who suddenly one day complained about stomach pain. And lo and behold, nung nagpunta siya sa emergency room at inoperahan siya, ito yung nakita. You know? A ball of hair that has already taken the shape of the stomach. Ganun karaming buhok na yung na-ingest niya. Ganun karaming beses siyang nag-inflict ng pain sa sarili niyang ulo. Again, if you have that kind of desire, hurting yourself, you get addicted to it, you find it pleasurable, then you have common symptom number three. Meron kang psychological disorder. Another example would be pedophilia. And this is in the DSM-5. A person with pedophilia tendencies or expressions of pedophilia falling in love with, with minors, it's considered a psychological disorder. It's in the DSM-5. Now, I just want to correct some misconception about pedophilia. No? Alam nyo ba, yung pedophilia, it's more than just falling in love with kids. Kasi minsan, ganun ang portrayal ng media sa pedophile. Eh. Yung, oh, meron siyang crush na bata. And then, that's it. Nai-inlove siya sa bata. No? Kulang yung detail na yun. Ang tunay na pedophilia, if you read DSM-5, no? ano siya eh? These people become sexually aroused when they see children suffering. That's why most pedophiles, when they, if they want to sexually arouse themselves, anong gagawin nila sa mga bata? They are going to physically torture them. When they see a child suffering, when they see a, ja- a child crying, when they physically torture a child, that is pleasing to their eyes, it sexually arouses them. Diba? So, given that pattern of behavior, it hits common symptom number three. Diba? Meron kang desire to hurt and abuse another person, hindi ka okay. Meron kang psychological disorder, 
hanapin na lang natin kung anong pangalan yan. And pedophilia is one of those disorders na pwede nating paghinalaan na meron ka. Especially if you have that pattern. You get sexually aroused when you see children who are suffering. Alright? In fact, one good example of this would be, although unofficial ito, no? we are not diagnosing this person, but many people are saying na meron talaga siya nito, Michael Jackson. Diba? May mga popular news na lumalabas that when Michael Jackson was still alive, when he was in the peak of his career, ang dami niya talaga mga bata na sexually abused. In fact, nagkaroon ng ano dyan eh, ng documentary Living Neverland where some of his victims talagang nag-speak out and confirms that Michael Jackson had sexual relationships with them and they were physically abused inside the place of Michael Jackson. Yun yung Neverland. Bumili si Michael Jackson ng malaking lupa you know, parang ano daw niya yun eh, parang castle daw niya yun, and that's where he he does things to kids that he meets. Grabe. Pero again, hindi na officially diagnose si Michael Jackson to be a pedophile. Alright? Another example of common symptom number three, what you watch from Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh my goodness. I mean, di ba, ang daming libro niyan? Ang dami ring movies na lumabas dyan? If you analyze the patterns of Christian Grey, one conclusion dapat makuha mo as a psych major, he's not doing mentally well. Right? Meron siyang mental illness. Christian Grey is mentally ill. In fact, DSM-5 calls his patterns Paraphilia. Again, we are not formally diagnosing Christian Grey here because after all, he's just a fiction character, right? Hindi naman totoong may Christian Grey. But people with Christian Grey patterns, what Christian Grey does to his partners, hindi talaga siya indication of good mental health. DSM calls this paraphilia. Kaya na lang bahala mag-research dyan, but in general, paraphilia means these people have intense desire to inflict certain sexual actions to their partners that will humiliate them. And when they humiliate their sexual partners, they feel sexually aroused. Ganon. And I think Christian Grey meron yan. Okay, again, uh, punta kayo sa DSM-5. Actually, DSM-5, ito, sexual sadism disorder, I think, ito yung possible. Again, kasi fiction lang naman si Christian Grey, no? But this is a possible diagnosis given what I saw from Christian Grey's actions. Sexual sadism disorder. You read this. You read the, the symptoms of that disorder you will see Christian Grey in these words. O, diba? So again, ang conclusion natin dito, merong psychological disorder si Christian Grey, but take a look at what media does to this. The media will romanticize mental illness. Again, Fifty Shades of Grey is a good example of how mental illness can be misrepresented as love, as passion for another person. Diba? Hindi kinakailangan ng ano, hindi kinakailangan ng fans ni Christian Grey na kinikilig sa kanya every time he does this to his partners. What Christian Grey needs is psychiatric help. Pero wala eh. For the sake of earning money for the producers of the movie, iroromanticize yung mental illness. Diba? So nagkakaroon tuloy ng mga misrepresentation yung certain forms of psychological disorders. People will have a tendency to think that sexual sadism is fine. It's just a matter of preference. But again, we don't agree. Sexual sadism is an illness as indicated in the DSM-5. You see how the media changes the definition of mental illness. Very scary. You know? At marami pang mga, mga other examples where media have misrepresented certain um, mental disorders, which is, for me, ha, it's not good. 
Kaya yung mga tao sa media talaga, they really have to be educated on mental illness to stop them from misrepresenting mental illness to the public. Alright? And also, going back to common symptom number three, if you have a desire to hurt yourself and other people, this is our basis that you already need to be institutionalized. Ibig sabihin ng institutionalized, talagang kinakailangang ilagay ka na sa isang psychiatric ward so that you can stop being a danger to yourself and to other people. And in the Philippines, one popular hospital for that where you have an option to institutionalize people with symptom number three is the National Center for Mental Health. So, assignment yun na lang to, no? I want you to read something about this center or watch videos in YouTube about this center so you will have an idea what this institution is all about. Okay? So, in summary, going back, what are the common symptoms that are being shared by all psychological disorders number one mental suffering number two inability to function in your everyday life and number three you have a desire to hurt yourself or other people again you don't have to have all the three for you to be considered psychologically ill no as long as you meet any one of the three kahit isa lang dyan meron ka that is already an indication that you may have a psychological disorder. But that statement is a little bit disturbing, right? Bakit? Paano ko nasabing disturbing? I want you to notice something about these symptoms. Anong napansin ninyo? Mental suffering, inability to function, desire to hurt self and other people. You will all agree with me that at certain points in our life, we have this. Diba? Hindi mo pwedeng i-deny yan. Paminsan-minsan naman talaga may nangyayari sa atin, we mentally suffer. We are unable to function in our everyday life. Bigla kang a-absent sa work. Oh. Or meron ka mga taong kinaiinisan, minsan pinagpaplanuhan mong saktan. Ano ba, binagsak ka ng teacher mo. Oh. Iisipin mo, ah, aabangan ko to sa parking lot. O kaya, ah, aabangan ko to sa labas, tapos susuntukin ko. Does that mean that when you have those things in your head, does that make you automatically mentally ill? Kasi paminsan-minsan, meron naman talaga tayong mga ganyan eh. Diba? Anong sagot doon? Kasi, kung ganun, ibig sabihin, ang daming beses na pala tayong naging mentally ill. Right? So, the answer of DSM-5 there is not automatically. Because the DSM would say that at least you need to be consistently showing any of these symptoms or all of these symptoms for a certain period of time consistently like for example within six months yun so kapag six months na tuloy-tuloy from day one until the last day within that six months in average talagang puro ka mental suffering inability to function ka you have desire to hurt yourself and other people then more or less that will confirm that you are psychologically ill Pero yung paminsan-minsan lang, especially if you have a valid reason why you feel any of this, like for instance, breakup. O, syempre, ang tagal-tagal mong girlfriend yun. Tapos nag-break kayo. O, eh, talagang magbe-mental suffer ka dyan. Talagang mag inability to function ka dyan. Talagang gusto mong patayin yung, yung pinalit niya sa'yo. Pero hindi ibig sabihin no, na mentally ill ka na. No? You are just having an experience out of that negative event. Pero, kapag yung ganong feelings mo, tumagal na yan for the next six months. Talagang obsession mo na yan. Obvious na obvious that for the next six months, you are showing all these signs, then maybe you already have a psychological disorder. Pero yung pabugso-bugso lang, paminsan-minsan lang naman, especially if you have valid reasons why you would feel these things, that's okay. It will not make you a mentally ill person. Alright? So, I want you to think about everything that I've said so far. Marami na akong sinabi. So, let's pause for a quick break. Alright?
Now, I just want to close our lecture about psychological disorders by discussing specific psychological disorders para lang makita nyo yung mga concepts na diniscuss ko kanina come into life. How are these concepts and ideas come into life when we talk about specific psychological disorders? So, I'm going to discuss two, post-traumatic stress disorder and multiple personality disorder. If you want to learn more about specific psychological disorders, what do you do? You just consult the DSM-5. Okay? So, let's start with post-traumatic stress disorder, short for PTSD. Okay? Basically, this disorder happens to a person who experienced a traumatic event. Traumatic event. So, going back to, to the sources of psychological disorders, this will fall under environment. Walang taong pinanganak na meron ng PTSD. A person would develop PTSD because something external to that person happened that led to the development of PTSD. And what is that psychological force na nagde-develop ng PTSD? Sabi dito, any traumatic event. But what counts as traumatic event? Hindi kasi lahat ng event traumatic eh. Halimbawa, nadulas ka sa daan, hindi naman siya traumatic. Or kinagat ka ng langgam, hindi siya traumatic. So according to DSM, traumatic event involves events where you suffered from serious injuries, muntik mo nang ikamatay yung mga injury na yon, or you had a close encounter with death. You almost died, or maybe you witnessed other people died or almost died. So, that counts as traumatic event. So, hindi kasama dito yung nakagat ka ng langgam o yung tumama yung kuko mo sa kanto ng lamesa. It's not enough to be a traumatic event. Some examples of traumatic events that fit this definition by the DSM would include definitely national disasters. Kaya ang daming mga taong nagkaka-PTSD, nagkaka-PTSD kapag merong mga malalakas na bagyo o kalamidad na dumadating eh. Diba? Earthquakes, Typhoon Odette, no? Uh, ito, ano to eh? If I'm not mistaken, this is Typhoon Ondoy. Oh, wala pa dyan si Typhoon Milenio. Talagang, ang dami mga taong nagkaka-PTSD kapag may mga ganyan, no? What else? Vehicular accidents. Can you imagine? Na-survive mo yan, pero lasog-lasog yung katawan mo, ang tagal mo sa ospital. That will form trauma within you. And of course, the very popular shell shock by the soldiers. Marami sa ating mga sundalo, pag kagaling nila sa gera, pag uwi nila sa bahay, they are no longer the same people as they used to be because they develop PTSD. And it's understandable pag nasa gera, no? Kasi kapag nasa gera ka, talagang yung life mo is in constant threat. Lagi kang close sa death. Pwedeng ikaw yung mamatay or pwedeng yung mga kasama mo yung mamatay. And that can be very traumatic for a lot of soldiers. And I know you've heard some news in the United States, no? Na yung mga veterans nila, yung mga soldiers na galing sa gera, for example, galing sa Iraq, bigla na lang silang nagbe-breakdown mentally and they end up just shooting people around. The problem there was the PTSD was not properly handled after they were deployed. Kaya dapat yung mga bansa na nagpapadala ng mga sundalo sa mga gera, those countries must have a psychological debriefing program by the time those soldiers return back home. Ipoproseso yung mga experiences nila so that hindi sila magde-develop ng PTSD. Okay? So, some common symptoms of people with PTSD Tignan mo rin yung sarili mo, baka meron ka rin yan. Ayan. Lalong-lalo na if you underwent a traumatic experience, no? If you have any of this or some of this, then it's a possible expression that you have PTSD. Flashbacks, very common yan. Insomnia, you cannot sleep well because you always remember the traumatic event. Okay? Minsan, the psychological symptoms can become physical, you develop ulcers. Kaya that's another nature of mental disorders, ha? Na sa tingin ko, dapat alam nyo, no? Minsan, mental disorders can mask as physical symptoms. So, there are some physical symptoms that 
you have, the reason why you have that physical symptom, it's because of a psychological disorder. So, not all physical symptoms must be taken literally. Okay? Lagi mo pa ring tatanungin na yung physical symptom ba na yan, is it possible that it is psychological in origin? Alright? So, anyway, going back to PTSD, how do we treat people with PTSD? It's a combination of medication and psychological therapy. The main purpose of medication is to help this person to have a quiet mind, to still the mind. Kasi mahirap ka usapin ng isang taong traumatized, di ba? Mataas masyado yung level of anxiety niyan, you cannot effectively talk to this person in that psychological condition. So we give them certain medications to lower down or to relax their minds. And after that, after they are now uh, stable psychologically, pwede na natin silang kausapin through counseling. And one of the most common approaches in counseling people with PTSD is we let them retell the traumatic event. Okay? So, hindi ba weird yun? Na trauma na nga eh. Bakit papakwento mo pa ulit? Parang LBM lang yan, no? In the realm of physical health. Di ba, halimbawa, meron kang loose bowel movement? Ano ang gamot sa loose bowel movement? Answer, wala talagang gamot dyan eh. Di ba? You just let your body release and release the waste na na-ingest mo. Kaya ka naman nagkaka-LBM in the first place eh. Something foreign entered your body and your body is finding a way on how to get rid of that foreign object through the loose bowel movement. Ganun din tayo psychologically. The negative experiences that we had caused us to develop toxic ideas or toxic memories or toxic emotions. Now, what should we do so that we can get those toxic things out of our psychological system, ikukwento mo ng ikukwento. Ilalabas mo, share mo sa isang professional. ba? So, the same process, the same principle applies psychologically. The more you retell these traumatic events, the lower the intensity of those traumatic in- events that you will have within your mind. Nababawasan yung intensity ng mga negative memories because you keep on retelling the events. But please lang ha, just a word of warning, don't just find a traumatized person and then apply this lesson by forcing that person to retell the story. Don't play psychologist. Ginagawa lang ito ng mga professional psychologists because there is a right way on how to tell the person to retell the story. And once the person now is telling the story, there is also correct ways. There are correct ways on how to respond to the retelling of the story. Hindi lang naman kasi ipapakwento mo, tapos makikinig ka, tapos okay na siya. Hindi eh. Meron kang mga bagay na dapat sabihin habang nagkukwento siya. Meron ka rin mga bagay na hindi mo dapat sabihin habang nagkukwento siya that only professionals know. So if you are not a psychologist, and you are not an expert in mental health, don't play psychologist, hahanap ka ng traumatized person, papakwento mo sa kanya yung trauma niya, and expect na magiging better yung condition niya. Baka lalo pang lumala if you do that by yourself. Alright? And also, I just want to go back to my previous lesson in video number one. No? Notice here, it's a combination of medication plus psychological intervention. Did you notice that? Hindi tayo huminto lang sa medication, hindi rin tayo huminto lang sa psychological therapy. They should work together. Medication plus psychological therapy is the way to deal with PTSD. And I remember the concept that I taught you in the first video, the biopsychosocial approach. Remember, this is the way this is the approach that we need to use in understanding psychological disorders. The origin of psychological disorders, multifactorial yan. Biological, psychological, sociocultural. In the same way, when we talk about treatment, when we talk about dealing with people with certain disorders, yung interventions mo dapat 
halo-halo rin. Combination din. Biological intervention, psychological intervention, there are times, social, cultural interventions. Alright? So, that's all about PTSD. If you want to learn more about PTSD, just research about this yourself. Especially, read the DSM. Now, let's move on to the last disorder we are going to discuss. This is called Dissociative Identity Disorder or DID for short. Dati-rati, ang tawag dito is yung Multiple Personality Disorder. Yun yung tawag nung DSM-4. But after DSM-4 underwent revisions from Multiple Personality Disorder, now we call it DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. So, in this disorder, ang nangyayari, this person has more than one identity. Okay? Marami siyang identity. Marami siyang persona. Okay? Kapag meron lang tayong dalawang identities, ang tawag doon, split personality. So, if, you, if a person just jumps from identity A to identity B, that's split personality, but there are cases where a person will have multiple identities. In that case, ang tawag na nga dyan is multiple personality. But regardless kung alin dito, we call this condition dissociative identity disorder where a person possess more than one identity within the mind. Kasi ang normal talaga, isa lang dapat yung identity mo. Kung ikaw si Chester Howard, ikaw lang si Chester Howard. Hindi ka somebody else na nag exist pa within your mind. Okay? And among the different disorders, isa ito sa mga pinaka well represented in movies. There are already a lot of movies and books and novels that are inspired by dissociative identity disorder such as the following movies. Yung Identity... Yung me, myself, and Irene. Ito, ano to eh? Split personality to eh. Kasi dalawa lang yung identity dito, no? Pero ang matindi yung identity, parang anim yung identity dyan. Si Bill, if I'm not mistaken, nakalagay dito 16 personalities. And even in the movie Split, di ba? Ang dami rin yung mga identities doon, no? So, that's the nature of dissociative identity disorder. Now, let me share to you some other details about this intriguing disorder. Alam nyo ba, in this disorder, there are two kinds of identities. We have the host identity and the alter identity. Host identity, ito yung kung sino ka talaga. Ito yung kung sino ka talaga before the other identities appeared. So, let's say, in my case, halimbawa, hindi, example lang, no? wala, ako, wala akong ganitong disorder, halimbawa lang, the host identity will be Chester Howard. The Chester Howard that you know as your teacher, that will be my host identity. Pero, posible rin na, uh, pero yung alter ko pala, sorry, yung alter ko naman is the identity that maybe you don't know about. That's the difference. So, host identity is the identity known to many people na kilala nung taong may ganitong sakit. At yung alter niya, ito yung identity na hindi alam ng iba na meron pala siya. ba? Trivia, did you know that in this disorder, one trigger na nagpapalabas sa alter ng isang tao is stress. Usually, when a person with this disorder becomes stressed, that is a very powerful trigger to make the alters come out. Mawawala yung host, biglang mapapalitan siya ng alter kasi na-stress yung tao. Kaya, I want to emphasize on this. This is a good example to to show to you how important the environment is in managing mental disorders. Like going back to this disorder para hindi lumabas yung alter, para makontrol mo yung frequency ng paglabas ng alter, one way to do that is to make sure the person will not be stressed. And that has something to do with the environment. 
Kaya nga isang reason din yan kung bakit minsan yung mga ganitong tao, we institutionalize them. Because inside the institution, inside mental institution, the environment is highly controlled so we can control the level of stress para hindi lumalabas ang lumalabas yung mga alters. Alright? Other things about this disorder, uh, ito maganda rin ito, no? There are times that host and the alter identities differ in personalities. That's possible. Yung host, extrovert, pero yung alter niya, introvert. They may even, even differ in their sexuality. May mga ganyang cases. Yung host, straight. Pero yung alter niya, homosexual. Yung isa pang alter niya, ay asexual. Yung isa pang alter niya, bisexual. That's even possible. Age, pwede rin magkaiba. The host is 35 years old, pero meron siyang alter niya 10 years old. Yung isang alter niya ay 89 years old. And when these alters come out, even the behavioral patterns change according to age. Talagang kapag lumabas yung alter na bata, nagboboses bata rin, nagkikilos bata rin. Kapag lumabas naman yung 89-year-old na alter, the same. They act as if they are really 89 years old. Okay? What else? Even handwriting, ah, there are studies that show that for people with dissociative identity disorder, if you compare the handwritings of the different alters, talagang may kita mo that they are different from each other. It's as if they are written by three different hands. Like, in this case, hindi ko lang alam kung kita nyo, no? This is the host, handwriting. Now, this one is the writing of the, of alter one. Tapos yung short paragraph dito is the writing of alter two. Host, alter one, and alter two. Different handwritings. Or even brain activity. In, in advanced studies of multiple of oh, sorry of dissociative identity disorders they also find out that when you compare the brain activities of each alter to each other including the host they will have unique brain patterns iba-iba sila ng brain patterns no as if it's as if that body contains different identities grabe kaya minsan nakakatakot no or even language ito talaga yung pinaka nakakaano This is a very intriguing, one of the most intriguing um, symptoms or cases in dissociative identity disorder. Can you imagine? Ang dami na mga reports where we have the uh, we have the host, right? The host is known to be an English speaker. That's the only language he knows, English. But how do you explain the fact that some of his alters speak foreign languages? Yung isang alter niya ang galing mag-French. Yung isang alter niya ang galing mag-German. And again, if you listen to the French alter and the German alter, they speak perfect, fluent German and French. But if you study the history of this person who is the host identity never in his life, He studied German nor French. How do you explain that? Where are those foreign languages coming from? Di ba? Kaya minsan, class, magtataka kayo, when, when, when we talk about psychological disorders like this, minsan, there is an intersection between psychology and spirituality. Especially for dissociative identity disorder. No? Can we be sure that all the IDs are cases of a psychological disorder or maybe we just miss some demon possession. Posible kaya na yung ibang cases of DID, it's not DID but a legit case of demon possession. Ako personally, no, let me just share with you, I, I agree with this. I believe in demon possession. It's biblical. It's in the Bible. Diba? In fact, that's one of the things that Jesus did a lot when he was still alive, right? when he was here on earth. Exorcism. Talagang merong kakayanan ang mga dark forces of the underworld to enter our minds and take control of it. 
But again, if you are a hardcore psychologist who believes in the method of science, it's so hard for you to accept demon possession. Eh. Ang tendency mo talaga, you will always interpret that as a psychological disorder. But my challenge is, so how do you make sense of, again, linguistic differences? Yung host English lang talaga ang alam, pero yung alter, nagyo-German, nagpe-French. Oh. How would that fit your psychology, your scientific only framework? Diba? Kaya minsan, talaga it makes a lot of sense to include biblical ideas in studying the human mind. Alright? And also, I just want to share that some people are more prone to develop dissociative identity disorder than other people. And according to studies, one of the most common denominator among people with this disorder is all of them, almost all of them, experienced child abuse or traumatic experiences during their childhood years. And according to theories, this will explain why there are alters. Ano ang role ng child abuse at ng traumatic experiences in the past in the formation of alters? Take a look at this picture. It goes something like this. Imagine that this is the person na merong traumatic event, this head. This person, because of the traumatic event, hates herself. Let's say she was sexually abused. Now, unconsciously, she hates herself. Nandidiri siya sa sarili niya because she was sexually abused. She feels dirty. Now, without her knowing it, what happens to the psyche is to escape that version of herself, the self that was sexually abused, the self that is disgusted with herself. What does the psyche do? The psyche will develop other possible alters to escape that host identity that was abused. So, doon na ngayon dumadami yung alters mo. Meron kang escape one. You have this alter. You have this escape two, another alter. Escape three is another alter. Escape four is another alter. Escape five is another alter, so on and so forth. So, it is an attempt of our mind to escape the host mind because of a traumatic experience. Doon nang gagaling yung origin of the alters. Alright? Very interesting, no? So, how do we treat people with dissociative identity disorder? First of all, we give them antipsychotic medications. But remember, antipsychotic medications are not designed to eliminate the disorder. These medications are designed to limit the number of times the alter will appear. And also, to stabilize the human mind. Okay? Remember, uh, hindi sila pwedeng ma-stress, di ba? So, some of these medications are designed to lower down their stress levels. Okay? And, of course, other than antipsychotic medications, meron na namang counseling yan. Pero, ang bad news sa ano, dissociative identity disorder, the success rate of therapy in connection to this kind of disorder is very low. Usually, hindi nagiging totally successful eh. The best they could do is to limit the number of times that alters will appear, but to totally eliminate all the alters, it's very hard to do. Once your mind develop many alters, those alters will exist as long as you are alive. Okay? Ang pinaka magandang gawin na lang dyan, ilimit na lang natin yung number of times na lumalabas yung mga alters. Okay, so before we end this lesson, let me just share with you big ideas about psychological disorders. Number one, mental illness is real. I think sinabi ko na to sa previous video, but I want to repeat it again. Take it seriously. Real people with real mental disorders exist. They need help. We need to take this seriously. Hindi lang sila gawa-gawa ng mga movies. Don't have that illusion that this conditions are only true in movies. Talaga meron mga taong may sakit mentally. Number two, don't self-diagnose mental disorders. Again, you need a professional to officially establish 
that a person or maybe you have a mental disorder. Okay? We need to be objective about this. Huwag yung ikaw lang ang nagko-conclude na meron ka or wala ka or meron yung kapitbahay mo or wala yung kapitbahay mo. That's a very dangerous activity. Number three, understanding the origin of um, psychological disorders is a very big step in helping us correctly manage the psychological disorder. And how do we do this? How do we understand the origin of disorders? We always take a look at the internal and the external sources of those disorders. Diba? Remember that principle? No? Ipag-aralan mo yung mga internal forces ng tao, pag-aralan mo yung mga external forces niya, and then you combine those data to make sense, to come up with an explanation why this person develop that psychological disorder. And if you do this process successfully, ang ganda ng pagkakakolekta ng data mo, ang ganda ng pagkaka-analyze mo kung bakit meron siyang ganong psychological disorder, that's already a big step para matulungan yung taong yun. Kasi yung interventions that you will prescribe to that person will be based on your correct analysis of the disorder, which will make the intervention effective in helping that person overcome the disorder. And last one, number four, what is the general approach in dealing with mental illness? It's always a combination of of internal forces and external forces and also medication. No, napakahalaga ng medication pero hindi dapat nag-stop lang tayo sa medication. More than medication, we should also achieve the appropriate environment for a certain disorder. So if the person is clinically depressed, there is a right environment for that. If the person is schizophrenic, there is a right environment for that. If the person has an eating disorder, there is a right environment for that. We make sure that the environment is appropriate to handle a given psychological disorder plus medication. Laging magkasama yan. Alright? So if you have any other questions about psychological disorders, just Ask away and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Thank you everyone. Have a great day and God bless. Bye-bye.